So guys and girls, uh, good evening. How are you? I hope you are absolutely massive and you are brilliant. Now I want to do uh, is a quick little function check if I can make sure the chat function is working. Sound is obviously flying. There's no question about that. Cameras are working. Rod, it looks like we're good to go sound wise as well. So fantastic. Uh, very, very, very good. Jeff, Terry, Mark, Remy, g'day. How are you, Tim? Hello. Video and sound are good. Fantastic. All right, so we got, guys, we're good to go. All right, that is that is brilliant. Now, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink some cameras down. All right, so we should be we should now be sitting with uh, all of the right all of the right sittings and settings and all this kind of stuff. So, guys, lots of familiar names in the webinar. Guys, can you believe we're actually up to webinar number six? Right, webinar numbers and number six. So, when when we first as when when the trading pit and I first started talking about doing an educational series, uh, you know, I spoke about nine webinars. And we thought, wow, that those nine webinars, uh, Jean Francois, how are you? Hope you're brilliant. We spoke about those nine webinars being like quite a uh, quite a mission, quite a journey, uh, guys. We're already six. We're already six webinars into it, which is which is very exciting. Now, as uh, again, if you've missed any of this, if you've missed any of the webinars, they are actually um, being hosted uh, as the recordings on uh, the YouTube uh, channel owned by the Trading Pit. I said, please don't be shy, guys. Go and watch those videos. Um, naturally, we're going to be doing part three, guys, or I should say part three, part six tonight, which is our third sort of hunt into the intermediate, guys, intermediate sort of trading space. Uh, hello from the Gold Coast. So, guys, we, we, tonight we normally do a bit of a country, guys. We do a little bit of a country check. We've clearly got Australia. It's no question. <laughs> so, Australia, we've got, so I can see, guys, I already see, we can see Australia. Uh, we've got Singapore, so we've got Australia, we've got Singapore, we've got uh, Cyprus, clearly, we've got Bali, we've got the UK, we've got Bris Vegas, <laughs> Terry, haven't heard Bris Vegas in a while. Um, so guys, we're, we're international tonight, which is really, really exciting, um, and what we're going to be doing, oh, Rotterdam, okay, in the Netherlands, well, there you go, Luca, how are you? Now, Luca, we were talking last week about your surname. So you are Italian, but you're living in the Netherlands. Incredible, guys. The technology is just amazing. Now, guys, tonight uh, we're going to be talking about trend continuation trades. And ironically, what has occurred today is effectively we've just ended up with this incredible trend on the markets. Um, I've traveled uh, to Greece. <laughs> it's a, right. So we're, guys, we're truly international today, which is really exciting. So we've got part six of the webinar series tonight. We're going to be doing trend continuation trades. The beauty of the trend continuation trades is our trades will typically run in a series of three. So you have a reversal trade that we did um, literally two webinars ago. Then you have a buyer switch trade. We did that last week. Guys, and this week we are going to be uh, doing a trend continuation trade. Now, the beauty of that, guys, it's all related to stair stepping. It's all related to candlestick analysis. It's all related to that, that classic three phase move that we've been speaking about already. So what we'll do is we'll do uh, do a little bit of revision tonight as we will jump into, <laughs> thank you, Rod. As I did do a projection, as I did do a long range target projection today for the NASDAQ traders, and I said the market's probably gonna go here. As it turns out, it did go there. Uh, and, and guys, I'm gonna spend a fair bit of time in the charts tonight because there are a couple of losing trades that I wanna talk about tonight. And I wanna talk about the dynamics of why they were losses. So for those of you that were actually in the live trading room with me today, now some of you got massive results, like two huge results. As other traders, well, the FDAX traders, we ran at 100% strike rate again today. So every time we pulled the trigger on the FDAX, it was absolutely amazing. But there was one, guys, it was actually a losing trade on the NASDAQ tonight. And I want to talk about the dynamics of that losing trade because I should have actually been stricter with the trading rules. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, guys, there's a really, really good little NASDAQ trade that I can actually talk to you tonight and say, do not take this trade under any circumstances. Now, I did mention it in the live trading room. I said, guys, this trade is setting up in the last 15 minutes. So for those that don't take the trade, do not take this trade because it did produce a losing trade for one of the traders. And it's in the moment we have a loss in the game of trading, immediately in, in the army, to give you an idea, the moment we have a loss, we bring in a control mechanism to stop the loss. So I said to my wife tonight, I said, what we're going to do in the live trading room is I'm not going to mention a trade in that last 15 minutes. I'm literally not going to say anything. The reason being is, is again, a losing trade has a psychologically damaging belief or psychological impact on your ability or your belief in yourself uh, and your ability to trade. 
So what we want to do, guys, is professional risk controllers, which we'll go through in a second, is we want to make sure that we're only ever getting the highest probability trades. That means sticking to the algorithm. It means following the rules. It means basically moving those with the ebb and flow of the market, which, which is effectively what we've been doing for six webinars, or literally it's number six today. Um, now, guys, we're going to be doing trend continuation trades. Yeah, it's a, yeah it's a, look, it's a great point, guys. Lots of questions coming up. Self-doubt, Phil. Self-doubt is really, 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 like really, really, really important. It's, it's, it has a huge impact, guys. It has a huge impact on trading. So if, you, if you're a naturally a self-doubting person and you bring a lot of self-doubt into trading, then naturally you're probably going to find in the game of trading the self-doubt manifests into, into shitty results. Now, shitty results being a technical trading term, of course. However, I, I suppose the beauty of having traded for a while, I've been trading for a long time, guys. And, and the long story short is I've seen really good traders come and go. I've seen really bad traders come and go. At the end of the day, if you want to be really, really amazing at trading, as you need to simplify your trading plan to the point at which you can basically write it on a post-it note. Does everyone remember those little yellow notes that you literally used to write on and stick it on your screen? If your trading plan, exactly right, Jeff, keep it simple, but guys, if your trading plan, if you if your trading plan is written over like 17 pages, you've got a problem, right? You should be able to say, for example, if I show you the FTAX, if I show you the FTAX from today, now this is my, this is a live execution chart here, guys, just here. Um, now, these are the trades I've physically executed today. They're worth around about 2,300 US dollars. Just again, if you want to know how much the trades are worth. So basically what I did is I waited for the market to fail at a pivot, then I went long. And then I waited for it to push up here and fail at the Fibonacci's and then I went short and then I waited for it to fail at the Fibonacci and Fibonacci again and then I went short. Three trades here, guys. So I took a long, followed by a long, followed by a short. Now I follow exactly the same trading plan every day. Okay. So I went long. That trade there is that's a five and a 10 point target. You can do the maths on that if you would like. Then went long again. And then I went short again. I followed exactly the same trading plan today. Three winning trades. And then I stopped trading. Now, some of the FTAX traders went on to trade at least another three or four winning trades. So some of those FTAX traders tonight. As instead of say two thousand US dollars, they did three or four thousand US dollars, which is really exciting. Reason being is if you can do three or four thousand US dollars a week, your world changes, right? But if you can do three or four thousand dollars a day, your world changes far faster, right? So again, so what I do, guys, if you if you've got an issue with complexity in trading, guys, you've literally got it. It doesn't matter what you're trading, guys. Crypto, it could be forex, it could be CFDs, it could be anything. If you can't write your trading plan down on the back of a post-it note, you've got a problem. What does my trading plan look like? Okay, I wait for the I wait for the market to fail at a pivot, and then I join the other team. That's my entire plan. People go, but lucky, <laughs> but lucky. It's got to be harder than that. It's got to be more complex. Where's your RSI? Where's your MACD? Where's your Bollinger Band? I'm like, well, none of them apply to what I do, so I have none of that crap on my charts. Like, like, because I'm, I, like I don't want to be, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be rude, guys. But that is the execution chart straight out of the live trading room. And and for those of you that know how I present, I'll shrink this up for you. Right? That's a live chart on the FTAX. There's nowhere to hide here, guys. There's nowhere to hide. Now I could have reversed off the pivot up here, had another win. Could have reversed off the pivot here, had another win. So you guys, you guys know what I'm doing here. We could have reversed up here, had a win, reversed here. So I could have actually added another two thousand US dollars to that total already by just following that very, very simple plan. I wait for the market to fail at a pivot, and then I send it back the other way. Now it's really, really important if you're going to do that, guys. You pivot to the right spot. <laughs> it's probably a good point. Uh, but anyway, we'll, we'll talk about that tonight. We're going to do FTAX tonight, guys. We're also going to do uh, going to do FTAX, and we're going to do Nasdaq tonight, which is brilliant. Um, what is better doing 21 ticks and up the contracts or stay for a couple of hundred ticks? Lou, that, that's a great question, guys. Now, I've got to be careful how long I talk for. So my target for night, I'm going to do those things right there for everybody to answer Lou's question. When you first start trading, guys, when you first start trading, so it applies to Lou and clearly everybody else, the best thing you can possibly do, guys, is jump in as early as you possibly can in the hour into a valid trade. If you're a NASDAQ trader, use a hundred US dollar target, make the hundred US dollars and just stop trading. Now I can show you how to do that on the NASDAQ today, guys. The NASDAQ traders who followed the guidance on the NASDAQ early, guys, they nailed it. The NASDAQ traders that got in trouble late in the session is because this session gets quite difficult at the end and I'll, I'll explain that when we get in there. So 
Lou, the best thing you can possibly do, the best thing you can possibly do when you get started is to use a small target that sets a realistic expectation on the market. Go and belt that target every single day and get very, very good at doing that. Okay. Now, the problem you face when you do that, though, is typically your target is going to be smaller than your stop loss. So you can have two or three winning trades and then have a losing trade and give most of it back. So that's the so like it's phase one, guys and girls, is get really, really consistent with what you're doing. I'm, I'm actually, dare I say it, I'm getting into next week's webinar. But phase one, you've asked the question, phase one is get really, really good at short range targets. OK, so get really good at reading the market, get really good at trading the market. What we then need to do, phase one, boom, finished. What we then need to do is we then need to up your average winning trade to be more than your average loss. So that's when we literally, Lou, we go to two targets like we did on the like we did on the NASDAQ this afternoon. So right, guys and girls, what we're going to do is we're going to get into this trade. Your first target is either 10 or 20 ticks. And then I want you to try and hold on to this trade for up to 15 minutes. Now, as it turns out, that ended up being about 140 ticks. So what was your result, Lou, tonight? If you did that, your result was 20 and 140. What does that mean? You're averaging over 20. What does that mean? Your average winning trade is significantly larger than your average losing trade. Now, the easiest way to do that is to use a two target strategy. So you've got an early first target, money's in the bank, can't lose anything. If it runs, it runs. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Stage three, guys, now this is getting into next week's webinar, but guys, stage three is you'd say, Lockie, I'm going to go long on this trade. So a valid trade, for example, like we had tonight on the NASDAQ, I'm going to go long on that. And I'm just going to basically hold it for half an hour, 40 minutes. I'm going to hold it for an hour. So you're basically running with all of your eggs in one basket. Psychologically, quite challenging to do. OK, very rewarding when you get it right. Very disappointing when it goes 100 ticks in your favor, and then turns around and comes back and stops you out at break even. So hence that middle ground, guys, of an early first target, risk control, large second target. That is how I've seen most people basically graduate into the game of professional trading is using a split target strategy. Um, I got 96. Okay, well, there you go, mate. So, Lou, so guys, Lou's question or Lou's comment here is really, really good. And, and for those that can't see it, um, as, so what, what Lou's doing is Lou is using a two target strategy already, which is exciting. And he's basically said, I got 96 and then had a couple of losses. Now that is huge, guys. I'll tell you why it's huge. Because I would then ask Lou and I'd ask everybody in this webinar, what is your daily walk away point? What is the point of where you stop trading and say, well, slow down, Tiger, I've done enough. Now my walk away point, guys, my personal walk away point on the FTAX is a thousand US dollars. So if I make a thousand US dollars on the first trade, I stop. Now, some people go, oh, but, 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 Lockie, you could go for the next hour and make 10,000. I said, sure, but I'm also running a live trading room at the same time. So my goal is to get paid $1,000 a day to run a live trading room. You know, so, so uh, without being rude, guys, it's a reasonable wicket. But the flip side of that, though, is, is what I would do with everybody is I would make sure, I would make sure that you've got a walkaway point where you say, you know what, I've made 500 US dollars on the NASDAQ today. I'm done. Well, I'm done. You might start, guys, when you first start trading, you might say, my goal is 20 ticks. My goal is 100 US dollars. The moment I've made 100 US dollars, I'm done. Because, you know, you know that we, we don't have one of the traders in the webinar tonight, guys. There's a guy in Newcastle that I'm coaching, Greg. He's on more than 50 contracts on the S&P 500. I gave him this advice more than 10 years ago. Guys, and the advice was, please just start with $50 a day. If you can make $50 a day, eventually that's going to be $100 a day. Eventually it will be $500 a day. Then it's going to be $1,000 a day. And it just keeps going and going and going and going. So if you if guys, honestly, if you've got your L plates on, if you've just started trading, the NASDAQ traders, the moment you've made between 100 and 200 US dollars profit, you say, Lockie, I'm done. I'm finished. <laughs> now, Sure, you're going to miss out on four or five more trades and isn't this went fantastic, but what happens if the fifth trade is a loss and you give back most of your profit? So that's why, guys, you have this. Now, this is like next week's webinar, but you have this very, very highly defined profit target on a weekly basis and a daily basis. And then you just focus on getting that every day because that, that's what you do. Um, Lou, uh, I'll, I'll let, I'll, yeah, I'll, Remy, I'll let you do that one. I'll let you do that one. 
So guys, we're going to be doing these 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 points today. So most importantly, guys, these are my like my, my key learnings for today. So trend continuation trades um, tend to basically be the last trade in the series of three. Okay, so we end up with a reversal followed by a buy switch followed by a continuation. Uh, the trade is easy to spot and very very easy to trade, particularly after a retrace. It's absolutely critical guys, that you get a retrace towards the trend before you get a signal. I'll show you that when we get into the charts. Now, guys, the trade is typically the last stand. Right now, that interesting point. This is the last crack the buyers are going to have the market before it reverses, right? Or the last crack the sellers have the market before it reverses. So you've just got to be a little bit careful when you're trading a trend style continuation trade. How far are you in those Fibonacci extensions, right? So the Fibonacci extension will show you how far the market is going to move. If your signal sets up very late in those extensions, guys, you're going to find the signal struggles to move. Now, mind you, if you've traded well, you've already picked up a buy switch or if you already picked up a reversal, you're probably ironically already over your daily goal anyway. Uh, and as a result, you don't care if the last trade stops out. But, but we'll talk about that when, when we get in there. Guys, point number four, the trade must be watched carefully guys, as the market may be preparing to reverse if there is not a large chart agreement with your trade. Now, we're going to start working on large chart stuff guys, next week. So we're talking, we're basically next week, guys, we've got three webinars to go, guys. They're all advanced webinars. We're going to be talking about target setting, Fibonacci's. We're going to be talking about smaller, larger chart combination trading, all as kind of an introduction as to how far you can take this thing. But ultimately, you guys, if you've got an MDI continuation or a trend continuation trade that is in, in agreement with a larger chart move, it's just going to keep going and going and going and going, which is what occurred today on the NASDAQ. Flip side, they will eventually run out of steam. So if you've missed the, that original like boom uptrend, you might have to wait, guys, for the next trading session, which everyone knows is a new trading session every hour. So literally, we've just started a new trading session on the NASDAQ right now. Okay, so here is the NASDAQ. We've just started. So we started a new trading session, guys, at 6 p.m. So that's 6 p.m. Tokyo time, 6 p.m. my time. So even, even the most junior traders in this webinar now, that's clearly a live chart, would be looking at that saying, right, Oloki, so I've got a minus two rated static bar reversal short. Now, I'm going to ask all of you guys a trick question, and no one's going to know the answer to this, of course. But when does the NASDAQ normally turn? Now, I know we've said this for five webinars already, but when <laughs> it normally turns on the hour, as it turns on the hour, exactly right. So if you've missed these trades on the way up, guys, if you've missed the trades on the way up, you simply say, right, well, I'm going to go back to my charts at six o'clock. I'm going to wait for the first reversal, and I'm going to trade the market down. Now, interesting point. The market then tries to turn again on the, again on the, when does the market turn? Again on the hour. Awesome. So that is a static bar reversal short. What is the market currently doing? It's currently selling down. So if you sold, guys, I've got Tim, actually, Tim's in the webinar tonight, guys. My indicator, my indicator coder Tim is in the webinar with us tonight. As he is the man that said, Lockie, what do you think about putting a minus two here to show everybody how strong that signal is? Now, anyone in the world, guys, could have taken that signal and the market's gone. It looks like around about probably 60 ticks in your favor. So the daily, guys, the daily retirement goal on the NASDAQ is 20 ticks. That's that box right there. So you could have gone short at six o'clock on that minus two rated static bar reversal and done your daily goal. You could have gone short over here on the same signal and done your daily goal again. So. Exactly, exactly right, Tim. Lou, exactly right. So my, so Tim, guys, Tim's in the webinar with us tonight. He's an exceptionally talented guy, a lovely guy, uh, lovely. So he's a pleasure to work with. But my point being, guys, I mean, I've said for the last five webinars, the index normally turns on the hour. What has just occurred? We've turned on the hour. We've had two successful reversal trades turning on the hour. Fancy that. <laughs> right now. I've got to keep going, guys. I'm right out of time now. I do have to talk about risk, so let's we'll, we'll get into the proper stuff. I right, so when you are trading futures or CFDs, guys, regardless of what you're trading, they're effectively both traded on leverage. Ultimately, what does that mean, guys? Um, the beauty of trading, guys, is there's two risks. There's a risk of making money and losing money. Full stop. Now you probably pick up as a result of this webinar tonight. We are professional risk controllers. Right? That's all we do. Now, in saying that, because we trade on margin, guys, not only can we lose money and make money, we can actually lose and make it really, really quick. All right. So what does that mean? 
is we need to be really, really switched on to risk control. And some of the questions we've already got already, so lucky about how, how do I take these long range trades? Do I do a short range and long range target? As that is the best way, that is the best way I've ever seen people manage their psychology around trading to the point at which it pops up and, be, and, and becomes massively brilliant. So I will show you guys, I will show you when we get into the NASDAQ chart on those two reversals, but also on all the trend continuation trades today, how you could have traded those in order to have a short range target. So you take some money out, you feel good about the trade, you reduce your risk on the trade. And then if it runs in your favor, giddy up. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter, guys. Imagine engineering every one of these trades into a scenario, let's say 10 to 15 minutes into the trade, where you cannot lose any money on the trade. It's mechanically impossible. It's a really, really good way to build a positive psychology around trading. Positive psychology, that takes us to two webinars from now, but we'll, 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 keep, build, we'll keep building on this. Guys, now that's saying the presentation tonight, guys, we, we have to do this because we're obviously across multiple countries, multiple jurisdictions. This is going live on Facebook. It's live on YouTube. I, was, I do have to mention that the presentation, everything I talk about tonight, regardless of jurisdiction, guys, is general information only. And the past performance of any financial product can't be used as an indication for future performance. We used to be able to do that, but now we can't. <laughs> we can't now. As a, basically um, a quick slide for introduction, guys, my name is Lockie. I'm the Chief Trading Officer at Doro. Um, effectively, what have I done for the last 17 years is I've basically just traded. I've traded or assisted people running trading schools, guys, or literally just been a private trader. Uh, long story short, I was trained in Sydney by a bank, guys. Before that, I was in uh, the Army, did 15 years, multiple operational tours overseas. I do have a very, very straight presentation style, guys. So you've been in here before guys no fluff no bubbles i just want to get straight to the point guys so uh, if you don't mind the military um if you don't <laughs> if you don't mind the military way of presenting guys to me at the end of the day you've come to the webinar because you want to learn something i want to teach you what i know about what we do some of you will probably off the back of this say lucky i want to i want to have a look at your live trading room or i want to look at your education or i want to do something along those lines guys that's fantastic the, the webinar series is designed to show you that there's a very, very good way to trade the markets. Obviously, everything we do is live chart. I've come straight out of a European open live trading room. I've been running that trading room, and guys, in that time slot now for more than nine years. Suffice to say, there's not many questions I haven't answered about the European Open. It's very exciting news. Okay, for those that aren't aware, we're about to open on the 1st of July. We launch a US Open live trading room and also a US closed live trading room. So we will have the top three trading sessions in the world, all covered by professional traders. And all you got to do is log in and have them assist you take trades, guys, which, which I think is really, really exciting. So my history, guys, in the futures trading game, um, basically many of you have been to the webinar before you've seen this. I was the, the, the most important dates So the 1st of August 2007. I discovered futures trading and realized there was a very, very big difference between futures and Forex. Now, I'd been led to believe by brokers guys, that brokers were the only way to trade the market. I discovered on the 1st of August 2007, you don't need to use a broker to trade a market completely revolutionized everything that I did. I launched my first trading school in 2009. Most 2010 launched the strategies that I'm going to be showing you tonight. Mid-2010 launched the Delta Indicator, which I'm going to introduce you tonight. 11, guys, I started speaking internationally. I was about the opportunity to speak in multiple countries. I've been published in multiple languages. I've got an international bestseller. Uh, 2013, got to work with the big guy. So President 45, probably going to be President 47. Uh, guys, and then end of 2023, um, I had an opportunity to move to Japan. Guys, I got picked up by Doro Day Trading out of Singapore. They have been incredibly amazing to, to me as a trader. They basically said, Lockie, you're the trader. We're not. You just go and do your thing. You'll be as amazing as you possibly can, and we'll basically support you in the background. And uh, guys, moving to Japan, uh, again, we're, we're all, I'm the only one not on a Japanese passport, but all my family are on Japanese passports. Uh, we now live in Japan. Uh, we will be here till the middle of next year at the earliest. And as Japan's insane, <laughs> it's just incredible. The temple, you got an idea. The temple down the road, that's the temple down the road, is more than more than six hundred years old. Just Japan's amazing. But anyway, we're going to do trend continuation trades tonight, guys, and we're going to do it on the European Open. So straight out of the European Open, open LTR session. Because we are starting to transition, guys, from the, the beginner webinars into the intermediate and then the three advanced sessions start next week, 
as I'm going to use the FDAX and also the NASDAQ, right? The FDAX is a slightly more advanced market. NASDAQ, we'll, we'll, we'll stick to the beginners on that one. And guys, ultimately what we want to do is I want to come away from, I want to come away from the webinar tonight with a whole lot of understanding, but at the same time, I want to show you what we did in the LTR. I also want to show you how you could have traded the, the, the markets very well tonight. I also want to show you how you could have made a mistake tonight. It's the mistakes in trading that cost you money. As I've got a saying in the game of trading, which is success leaves clues, but so does failure. And I think failure leaves the more important clues. So if a trader lost money tonight, we want to pull that apart immediately. And we say, how could we as a group of traders in a live trading room, or you guys might not be in the live trading room, but how can you as a group of traders trade better? As you quite often learn better from people's failure than you do from people's success. But the game of trading, because it's effectively a zero sum game, which, which is exciting, guys. If you, if you don't get personal, it's actually really exciting. You can learn very, very fast. Now, three very key points, guys, on the, the trend continuation. So three very key points. The trend continuation trades are in the third um, the third class of trade that I was introduced to. So everything I learned, guys, in 2007 was based on negative histogram divergence. A trend continuation is simply just an extension of um, what we call NHD. Now, that being said, trend continuation trades are always traded with a step of the market. I'll show you a graphic on that shortly. The trend continuation trades allow you to confirm the trend of the market is likely to continue until your team reaches a point of fatigue. Now, this is the only danger with a trend continuation trade is what happens if everybody else is about to turn the market and go back the other way. Now, the way, guys, the way to understand if you're at a market stall point is either you get an excess volume, so you get an excess volume used by the buyers, for example, so if you want to buy the market and they start using too much volume, you know they're about to run out of steam. Or mathematically, guys, if we're at a Fibonacci extension at that magic 133 Fibonacci extension for the NASDAQ, you know that they're probably running out of steam. Now, guys, the best way to trade a trend continuation trade is to actually make, uh, make sure the candle is physically closed then ask the question, is there anything in the way of this ultimate trade? All right, if there's something in the way of the trade, you wanna say, you know what, I think the trend is over. So picking that market stall point, I was picking that market stall point is a bit of an art. The most accurate way to do that is a Fibonacci extension. All right, so I'll, I, we're gonna do a little bit more work on the extensions, guys, in, in the later webinars. I will show you again tonight how to do it uh, and to give you some of those key numbers to focus on. So trend continuation trades apply equally to the five minute chart guys as they do to larger charts as they do to other trading disciplines. Now the beauty of our style of trading, guys, as, as no doubt you've learned in other webinars, there is no rush, there is no FOMO, which stands for fear of missing out. There's absolutely no panic. The, the indicators I wanna show you tonight, guys, be you a pure price movement trader or an indicator based trader, there's more than 60 trades a day. You only need one or two good ones to retire. So you can become very selective, guys, about the trades that you take. And it brings up an awesome discussion we had at the start about once you've achieved your daily goal, you need to walk away. Because you need to walk away. Now, my daily goal, guys, FTAX traders, most FTAX traders are probably setting a goal of anywhere between 400 and 1,000 Aussie dollars. Uh, for the NASDAQ traders, you know, 100 to 200 US dollars is a great spot to start. 200 become 300, 300 becomes 400. Eventually you get really, really good at what you do. Okay, so please don't. As I've got a saying in this game of trading, many of you probably heard it before. It's called go slow to go fast. Please don't rush into the game of trading. And um, please don't try and dominate the world in your undies either. Not only does it not look particularly good, it doesn't work in trading, guys. So don't run into trading and go, I am Superman dressed in Lycra, giddy up. The market will just hand you a... Um, maybe a reality check, right? So, so please don't, <laughs> don't chase the money. Don't try and dominate the world, the world financial markets in your undies because it generally doesn't work. Now, how do we avoid undie based trading, guys? We basically let the market do the heavy lifting, right? So you've got to let the market generate the signal. Then all we do is take advantage of it. Like, guys, like what has just occurred right, on this NASDAQ trade. Now, I just want to highlight the point. For those that came to the reversal webinar two weeks ago, we wait for the market to fail. It normally turns on the hour. We literally take the trade and we wait at least 15 minutes to work out what they're doing. Okay, that one's gone down. New reversal trade, that one's gone down. So again, as you wait for the market to generate the signal and then you take the trade. Now, why is that so important, guys, psychologically? If we want to build a great psychology around trading, 
and the market is responsible for generating the signals. Who is responsible if the signal doesn't go where you anticipate? You or the market? So what we want to do, guys, we want to take this, this let the market do the heavy lifting concept a lot further. And we basically then we morph or we mature into a concept. You do this, I do that. So literally, it's two responses. You do this, I do that, which means you generate a great signal, I'll take it. You don't generate a signal, I won't touch it. Eventually, guys, you get to the point where if you have a losing trade, you can blame it on the market, provided, provided you've actually followed your rules. Right? So what it ultimately means is psychologically, it's not your fault you had a losing trade, it's the market's fault. The moment we can dislocate ourselves from the market and realize we are literally just following the ebb and flow, guys, of buyers and sellers in the market, we basically depersonalize our trading. We mechanize our trading. We become a little bit robotic about what we do to the point at which, guys, the losing trade doesn't psychologically affect you because it's not your fault. Can everybody see the angle I'm going here, guys? That's a couple of webinars away, of course. But my point being is that we can depersonalize our trading. Okay, and, that, and that's ultimately what we want to be doing. Now, I'm just going to, guys, I'm going to roll through this little bit of revision for you, a little bit of revision for you, for those that, so if you haven't been to one of these webinars before, brilliant, guys, you'll be able to follow along. If you have, guys, this will become really important when we go to the live charts. So the foundation for everything that we do, guys, is called an ABC stair step. All right, that little point there is um, a big, let me rewind. The green is the buyers, the red are the sellers. So what we've basically got there is we've got what we call a buyer owned ABC point. Okay, so when the sellers have shot down here, this little B leg, they've actually shot down. Basically the sellers have, have, have gone down in the market, but they can't match the buyers. What do we do? We call that a seller failure point. Because once the buyers close over the breach point, okay, we say that the buyers own the step in the market. We also say that the buyers have completed two steps. Now, because as we did in our webinar previously, we're expecting the market to typically move in three phases. So an interesting point, you're most likely going to pick up your trend continuation trades in either buyer step two or buyer step three. Okay, now this is where buyer step three comes in. Once again, you've got a seller failure point. Awesome. You've got a breach point. And basically, it's this same process over and over and over again. Right? So as we, as we know from the first webinar or first couple of webinars, the market normally moves in three phases. Now, to put it into context, guys, put it into context, I'm going to put a little trend down on the uh, down on the on the left hand side. Whoops. Let me just go here. There's my trend over there on the left hand side of the chart. So effectively, what's occurred here, we've got this beautiful sell down Guys, normally in buyer step one is where you pick up the reversals. Buyer step two is where you pick up the buyer switch. Buyer step three is when you pick up the continuation. So that's beautiful series of three, uh, three signals. Now, as that text on the right hand side, as detailed in previous sessions, the markets normally move in two or three phases. The trend continuation trade almost always occurs in buyer step two or buyer step three, and is hence always traded with the step in the market. The signal is best traded, guys, after the sellers have retraced back towards the trend indicator and ultimately failed to push the market down. Now, how is that expressed? Guys, we normally get a lower low before the buyers come back in and take control of the market again. Now, what I'm going to do, guys, I'll show you that on the live chart. Really, really easy to show you on the live chart. All right, so we'll do that in a second. The flip side of that, guys, it works clearly in both directions. So for those that haven't been to one of these sessions before, we can get ABC patterns that are also owned by the sellers. Okay, so ultimately the red are the sellers, the green are the buyers. What's occurred here is you've got what we refer to as a closed ABC pattern that is owned by the sellers. Now, naturally, the process continues. Right? So exactly the same principles. You've got a breach point. Interesting, guys, if we close under the breach point, in the case of the sellers here, you've got a completed pattern. The market's probably going to keep going. If you can't close under that breach point, the market is highly likely to turn around and reverse and go back the other way. Now, again, guys, we've got seller step one, seller step two, seller step three. Um, what I want to do, guys, is, is again, give you an uptrend over there on the left-hand side to bring this into context. So beautiful uptrend. In fact, that's exactly what's occurring right now, guys, on the NASDAQ chart. Have a look. Okay. Here's our beautiful uptrend. We've got sellers have moved the market down once. Sellers have moved the market down twice. And now we're basically waiting to see, are the sellers going to move it down the third time or are these guys going to reverse and come back up here? So that live, guys, that live NASDAQ chart right there is exactly what you can see here. 
So at the moment, the market is actually basically waiting. Do I get a third selling phase here or am I going to turn around and reverse and go back the other way? Now, as, as I said in the previous slide, the trend continuation trade almost always occurs in either, um, in fact, buyer step two, that should say seller step two or, or seller step three. Sorry, that's my fault. As, and the signal is best traded ultimately after the buyers have retraced back towards the trend indicator and failed. Right, so I'll, I'll build on I'll build on that um, I'll build on that for you. The most important thing to take away, guys, from the webinar at this point in time is this beautiful stair step. If it's easy for you to see the stair step in the market, it's easy for everybody else in the world to see the stair step. So it's a matter of sort of going back to those early webinars we did, was learning how to mark the stair step, and then basically building from there. Now the hint, guys, the hint I want to give everybody regarding the signal is the signal is sensitive to both directions, or sorry, sensitive in both directions to Fibonacci extensions. So please know your market's magic number to make sure that you've got room to take your profit out of the market before you hit the magic number. Now the magic number goes for tonight for the NASDAQ, the magic number is the 133. For the FDAX, it's the 133 or the 141.4. Right, so we'll talk about that as we need to. Now, these five points, guys, just to make sure that everybody knows exactly what we're doing. We've got to be, again, very, very careful with the, with the trend continuation trades, is that the market basically hasn't run out of steam. You'll either be running out of steam at a Fibonacci extension, or you'll be running out of steam. Uh, you'll be running out of steam at a Fib extension. Guys are running out of steam at a um, uh, because the market is using excess volume. So I can show you both of those. Now, guys, a couple of examples. Uh, so, so basically a static chart example, then we go into the live charts. For those that haven't been in the webinar before, that little band that runs through the, um, through the chart is our trend indicator. When it's red, most of the junior traders are trading down. When it's green, most of them are trading up. As we've got these pivot files that run throughout the, uh, run throughout the charts, they're basically brick walls in the market. We'll see them. Um, <laughs> so I was not laughing, the NASDAQ. Guys, the NASDAQ is rocketing back the other way. Is anybody, guys, is anybody long, just out of interest, is anybody long on the NASDAQ? Guys, now, the reason I say that, uh, like, I'm not kidding. I was, look, this is actually quite funny. Um, you know how we said that there's a little, there's a great little reversal signal here, Luke, you are, and a great reversal signal here. Guys, there's also an absolutely phenomenal reversal signal here on the NASDAQ, okay? That is also, guys, this little minus two rated static bar reversal is also a reversal long. Now, do you guys remember that we reverse against the stair step? Okay, seller step one, seller step two. Who owns the stair step? The sellers. That is a reversal bar right there, guys. That's a static bar reversal long. And one thing I wanted to point out for you guys, and now many of you have not seen these before, but they're now on the charts. See all these little green lines here? Guys, these little green lines are the delta indicator. They're actually designed to help you if you're in this trade, stay in the trade for longer. So while the market is continuing to actually paint these little buying signals on the screen, it means there's institutional buyers that are buying at this level and that level and that level and that level. So why this can guys, why this continues to bop along, we've had a reversal signal, it's gone to target, reversal signal, gone to target, reversal signal that's gone to target. The live chart. Now, mind you, every time I pull the live chart up, guys, I get I get further and further behind. So <laughs> I have to have to keep working. So, Luke, if you are long, Remy's long on that one as well, guys. If you are long on that reversal trade, then that is going beautifully, and then that's occurring while we're running the we're running a live webinar. So I do think that's kind of exciting. Uh, for those that don't know, that's a target indicator over there on the left hand side. I've also got price down here. We've also got volume down the bottom. Okay, now. Um, extreme volume for those of you that use an indicator for extreme volume, that's the orange candle on the way down and the mustard green candle on the way back up. Now, as we want to talk about, we want to talk about um, the not only the trend that the trend change. So last week we were talking about trend changes. I just want to draw everybody's attention to the black circle. Can everybody see the trend has changed from green to red? That basically means that we're favoring anything we can get our hands on that is in favor of the sellers. Now, just hold on one second. It sounds like my two-year-old is trying to find me right in the crux of a webinar. Now, she she did that last week. So we'll just see if we can see if I can hide in the office. So, guys, that's our buyer switch trade that we spoke about last week. Now, as I build this, as I build this for you, as I build this for you, that's our buyer switch trade. Now, what we're looking for um, over there on the right-hand side, guys, there's the buyer switch trades we also spoke about last week. So once again. 
you've seen the color of the trend change. Now, the reason I mentioned this buy switch, guys, or this trend change, is typically your trend continuation trades occur after that. Okay, so that's when they physically occur. So as I build this for you on the right-hand side, we've got two buy switch trades we spoke about last week, spoke about the pros and cons of those. Um, effectively, you're looking for the trend change, and then, look, then we're looking for a continuation of that trend. Okay, now, let me build that for you. So go back to our little circles. Guys, go back to our little circles. I'm going to draw the stair step in, and what I'm then going to do is focus on this little candle here. All right, can everybody see that you've got that beautiful little stair step down? The sellers own the stair step. You've got a big selling leg followed by a little, little buying leg there. What we've got right in the middle of that red circle, guys, is the candles created a higher high. So what does that mean? The buyers have actually pushed back towards the MDI. So the market has pushed back towards the trend indicator and ultimately they've failed. So as my comment there for those people that, that are not that experienced with trading, Please note that the higher high here proves that the buyers have retraced back towards the MDI, that's the market direction indicator, guys, and they've ultimately failed. Now, what we want to do is we want to ask the question, why would they have failed? I also want to ask you another question. What does this failure mean and who can see it? All right, so first time around, let me give you the answer. Because what's actually occurring is the sellers are clearly in control of the market. The buyers are pushed through. The only reason the buyers are failing is because the sellers are too strong. Who can see that? Everybody in the world that knows what they're doing, which are ultimately the only traders that you want to be worried about anyway. So what then occurs, guys, on this next candle, on this next candle here, what then occurs is we get this big dominant candle. Now, this candle, guys, is your MDI continuation trade. Now, the strength of the signal is enhanced by its strength rating. Now, obviously, we've got a little number one sitting above the candle saying this is a very strong candle. You want to take advantage of it. But also, if you follow, guys, the principle of Fibonacci extension, where you draw your extension down the black line and up the little, up the little black line, so literally you follow that ABC there, you've got a very, very long range extension. Now, what does it mean? That your trend continuation trade is very early in the extension. It's likely to go a very long way. Now, that's a little bit hard. Guys, it's a little bit hard to show you on a static chart, so I'll show you on a dynamic chart. Um, that's a really, really good point, Phil. So the signal doesn't need to close beyond the breach point. It just needs to close a very, very strong candle, as in it must also close outside the range of the previous candle. So would you agree, Phil, that that candle there has closed outside the range of the previous candle? And I also want to, guys, I also want to highlight that big red candle is a very, very strong statement to the rest of the world. The, the buyers tried and failed and the sellers have now taken over and we're off and racing. Guys. Now, you can, you can see that this has clearly gone a very, very long way in, in, um, in, in our favor. Now, what I've done, guys, I've actually used the US pre-market because this is the live trading room we're opening on the 1st of July. All right, so I've used this as an example to show you how far these signals can move in our favor, which is kind of exciting. As we go back over to um, those original buy switch trades we were talking about on the previous slide, the actual trend continuation trade doesn't actually occur until all the way up the top guys, in that red circle. All right, so we look at the stair step here. We look at the stair step here. Um, and we say, right, clear, so clearly the buyers own the stair step. But I wanted to highlight this, guys. There's a problem with that MDI continuation. So if you can follow my cursor, guys, if you can follow my cursor on the screen, we've literally gone from that little US open sign, the buyers have pushed the market up, sellers came back down, buyers pushed up, sellers came back down, buyers pushed up in the one I've actually labeled for you in the stair step. So this continuation trade that's actually occurring at the top of the chart is in the fourth buying leg. So can you guys see those beautiful buying legs in the market there? Okay, so what, what's your concern straight away, guys, straight away? What's your concern about a signal you're picking up in the fourth buying leg? What would be your primary concern? Well done, guys. It could be too late in the trend. All right, so note what happened with the one on the left-hand side. It was early in the trend. It was early in the second leg, and it absolutely flew. Now, that MDI continuation, guys, up there on the right-hand side is a valid signal, sure, and it went to a little bit of profit, sure, but can everybody see that these signals will always be trained or traded, I should say, in context with the stair step of the market? 
Okay, so you guys have absolutely nailed it. Market normally moves in three phases. So Diane, you've, you've nailed it. So in this case here, we've got three steps and a stumble. So what you don't wanna be doing guys and girls is picking up the stumble as an MDI continuation or a trend style continuation trade. Okay, you don't wanna be doing that. I'll show you a live chart example of that. So that's our little candle there. Okay, so please note the lower low here, the lower low has basically proved that the sellers have retraced back towards the MDI. Now, again, we could play the game. What does this failure ultimately mean? Who can see it? So the failure means that the sellers have run out of steam, the buyers are about to take control. But as we know, the buyers have taken control in basically the fourth phase of movement, which, which probably means they're going to struggle. So guys, we can start to get very, very selective about the, the best trades we can possibly take. Now, guys, play a bit of a joke on you. Does everyone remember Seinfeld? Or is anyone as old as me, guys? Do you remember Seinfeld? Now, does, every, does everyone remember the Kramer? <laughs> so, some of you do. Okay, good. You guys, the reason, not, not only do I think he's a bloody hilarious character, but I put him on, guys, I put him on here. The reason I put him on here is because this chart here was the chart I showed you a week ago. Okay, this is the chart I showed you a week ago. Now, what I want to do, guys, is I want to show you what this chart looks like with slightly more advanced slightly more advanced indicators built onto this chart because this actually becomes a lot of fun. So 21st of May, guys, please remember it's the 21st of May. And I want to take you from a beginner set of indicators, so literally a junior trader set of indicators to something slightly more advanced, okay, which is this one here. Now, please note, it's still the 21st of May, okay? And there is, there is the signal that we've already spoken about. Now, I just want to, guys, I just want to, to ex get you a little bit excited because this, these are slightly more advanced indicators. Now, th there's a reason I want to show you this. Now, guys, I've enhanced the chart you were seeing with more advanced indicators. Please note that this is a trend continuation trade we just discussed. But what I've added, guys, is I've added the Delta V1 indicator. All right. So the Delta V1 was written in 2009, guys. We enhanced it at the start of 2024. Uh, guys, Tim is in the webinar tonight. He's done an incredible job of, of helping me with that. But what I wanted to highlight, guys, is this. All of these, all of these deltas here, they're all valid selling trades. All right, so not only have you got your MDI continuation trade that we're talking about, and everybody knows why you would take it and, and, and how far it's gone, but every one of these little black boxes, guys, I'm actually adding onto the NASDAQ, is your daily goal of 100 US dollars. Now, you know how I said at the start of the webinar that do, do not rush, do not fear, la, la, la. The markets turn over more than 60 trades per day. Uh, exactly right, Jeff. We've got both of those running. So, guys, the, the, key, the, key point, the key point with this, the key point with this, and, and the reason I want to raise, guys, is every box I've added is worth $100. US dollars. So, every delta could have been traded in conjunction with the signal set we're talking about. As there's basically eight valid sell signals on the way down that have all gone to target. Now, again, if those of you out there in the world are building a psychology around trading, you need one or two winning trades in order to feel very, very good about yourself when you're trading on a daily basis. This exact example we were talking about is with a non-advanced chart, there's two trades and they're really good. With an advanced chart, there's eight trades and they've all gone to profit. Now, I, I, guys, I, I, find that, I find that really exciting. And does everybody want to know why the market failed there? Does everyone want to know the market failed? If you draw a Fibonacci, guys, from the top of that little green candle down to the orange, back up to the red and down, they've failed at the 133 Fib extension on the NASDAQ to the tick. The 133 Fib extension to the tick. So much so, guys, if I've got enough chart space on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewind back to the 21st and I'm going to show you that magic number, guys, and then we'll go to the live chart. So let me just... Let me just get this up in the background for you. Let me rewind to the 21st. Okay, I've just got to find myself in the charts. Hold on one second. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Yeah, this is a long way back, guys. So I'm just trying to find, okay, there's the 24th. Will you let me go back to the 21st? No, I need to load a little bit more data, guys, but I want to show you this exact Fibonacci failure. All right, so let me do this. Let me do this. It's coming as quickly as it possibly can. So I'm going to take you back to this chart. Guys, I'm going to show you how to draw the Fibonacci extension. I'm going to show you the 133 Fibonacci extension failure. 
And then I'm going to show you the live MDI continuations from today. And hopefully, guys, that means you walk away from the webinar going, well, hang on a second. Lucky, this was working on the 21st and it's also working today and it worked yesterday and it worked the day before. And it's that magic Fibonacci extension. Guys, let me uh, let me find the date for you. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. My computer's doing lots of thinking. 22nd, all right. 22nd, we're getting there, getting there, getting there, getting there, getting there. I know this is very boring, guys, but the lesson is going to be amazing. Oh, here we go. Hello. All right, here we go. So this, guys, is from the 21st. This is from the 21st. And we can basically switch, guys, to live charts from now. And it's kind of it's kind of exciting, guys, because 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 okay there is our there's our mdi continuation trade we just spoke about brilliant now the sellers have sold the market down they've actually gone back you can probably see here you've got a higher high just there which means the buyers have pushed back towards the mdi and then we've got this one here so we've actually ended up with two trend continuation style trades and you're probably going, well, Lockie, that's awesome because that's a really nice, strong candle. That's a really nice, strong candle. Notice all the deltas, guys, in association with those candles are all flying. But what happened, guys? What went wrong with that candle right there? Why did the market turn there? Why would it just randomly turn out of the middle of nowhere? And what does it mean, guys? What does it mean? All of these buying deltas going back the other way. And this is where I think... I think we're going to blow everybody's mind, which I think is really exciting. All right. So to draw the Fibonacci extension, guys, which is one of our little sort of learning points from today, but we're going to be doing it in future webinars as well. We draw our line down and we draw our line up. Okay. We're following the stair step. Okay. Let me just get rid of that arrow there. So we're doing that. We're doing that. And then we're doing that. Okay. No, that's a great question, guys. Ken asked the question, Lockie, did the second candle close outside the range of the previous candle? It didn't. But because it's a really, really strong candle, so you can see it's almost twice the size of the previous candle, right? but it also has a strength rating over the top of number of one, we can jump on that and say, you know what, we'll give the sellers the benefit of the doubt because we have a retrace and a failure. So guys, it's all about the higher high, which is brilliant. Uh, exactly right, Jeff, you're on the money. The flip side of that, guys, let, let me do the Fibonacci extension here. All right? So we draw our Fibonacci down the stair step Okay, we draw our Fibonacci down the stair step and then we go back the other way and we're hunting, guys, we're hunting the 133 Fib extension as the, mas the magic NASDAQ number. Now, have a look at this and show me or tell me exactly where they failed. Now, I, I want to highlight this, guys and girls, because this is one of the biggest markets in the world. It's one of the biggest markets in the world. And it failed at exactly the 133 Fib extension, which is what I've been saying for the last six webinars. Now, interesting point, guys, interesting point. So a couple of little lessons. Okay, there's three, there's three, maybe four lessons that come out of this. As every time you've got a higher high and then you've got a really strong selling candle, how do you enter that trade? Right? So you enter the trade underneath the bottom of the candle. So in this case here, you enter underneath that candle and underneath that candle. So what's happened? The buyers have retraced up on the next candle, come back down, picked up your order and flown through your target. Brilliant. Note guys, that we've got this really, really strong selling candle down the bottom here, but it's straight into the 133 extension. Awesome. Also note as before this really, really strong candle, there could be a massive aha moment here guys. Before that big, big red, red strong candle there, there was no higher high. There was no retrace. So literally we've got, we've got a retrace before this one, big candle win, retrace, big candle win, no retrace, big candle, no win. So what's the key guys? The key is the buyers are pushed back towards the trend before the sellers are then coming and tank the market. So that, that would be a very, very key learning. So Ken, we're always, we're always entering outside the range of the candle. So what that means for us is we're entering, in that case, outside the wick of the candle. So you want the sellers to move into new territory. Yeah, you want the sellers to move into new territory. Now, guys, for the slightly more advanced traders, which I think is really exciting, as the market has come down and failed with the 133 extension, 
So what does it mean for all of these buy orders going back the other way? What do you reckon this is? I can tell you what it is. We've failed at the 133 FIB extension. All the institutional traders have said, ha ha, there's the Fibonacci failure. And what are they doing? They're buying the market back the other way. Every single one of those buy signals has gone to target. Goes now again, not to goes not to be rude, but your target, the hundred dollar target on the Nasdaq, looks like that. So if you were to wait for them to hit the one thirty three fib extension and take any of let's say the first eight deltas one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen, you could have taken any one of those thirteen deltas and you would have gone straight through your profit target. Any one of them. So I know that we've, we've switched to a slightly more advanced chart, but I want to show you guys and girls that once we can see the stair step, once we can recognize that series of three of reversal trade followed by a bias, which trade followed by a continuation trade, we can then enhance our charts even further and pick up a large number of trades, which means guys and girls as professional traders, you can get very, very picky. You get very, very picky and very choosy about what you do because you are only going to be trading the most perfect signals. All right, so have a look at that 133 FIB extension failure there. Right, now we're going to go to the live chart. I'm going to go to the live chart, which is right here. Okay, I want to talk to you about a mistake that was made today, guys, which was, again, it's, again, my mistake, and I'll tell you about it. Um, the, can you profit from the early deltas uh, funding the later ones? Ken, you could basically scale into your long run on all of those delta trades. Okay, you could scale into all of them if you wanted to. Okay, now, guys, this is the this is trading from today. So this is literally Thursday, 30th of May. You can see bottom left-hand corner. Most of the traders picked up an absolutely ballistic reversal trade, guys, to start the session. That little box there is worth 200 US dollars and obviously it went very, very well. The MDI continuation trades, guys, let me, let me draw on the screen to bring this into context. Here is our reversal trade, yeah? There is our bias switch trade. There is our MDI continuation trade right there. So literally you've got the reversal trade a number of weeks ago, the bias switch trade, we did last week. The MDI continuation trade, we had to wait for a lower low to get created here, wait for the lower low, and then you've got your MDI continuation trade. Uh, drawing an extension down, you ignore. Oh, Ken, yeah, so Ken, great question, mate. We're always drawing our Fibonacci extensions from extreme low to extreme high. Let, let, me, let me show you on the chart. Let me show you on the chart. I'll get rid of this. So guys, what we've got today, I'll put arrows on them because I want to make it really, really, really straightforward there is a reversal trade as we picked up the one on the left hand side and we took it long on the open so there's our reversal trade there is our buyer switch trade here is our mdi continuation trade now to work out where the market's going to go guys, to work out where the market's going to go we draw our fibonacci extension up to the high point and back to the low point and this could fascinate people this could fascinate people but note that from that guys from that we've cruised up we've hit the pivot we actually picked up a reversal here which was brilliant as they failed at the 133 extension they dropped back down they went back up there then they failed at the 133 fib extension to the tick then turned and flopped back down again now this is a trending guys this is a trending day so let me show you the additional mdi continuation trades okay now we're looking for a dominant candle after a retrace. All right, so there's a retrace, no dominant candle. There's a retrace, there's the dominant candle. No retrace, no retrace, right at the top of the jar. It's right at the top here. Oh, this is perfect. Let me get rid of the Fibonacci for a moment. So we have, guys, we have a retracement here. So there's our retracement, followed by a big dominant candle straight into a pivot. Now, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Are we allowed to buy the market into a pivot? Is anyone in the world allowed to buy the market into a pivot? I hope they've got the right pivot indicators on. Now, interesting point. What, where, where are we, guys? Where are we in the chart? Okay, let's have a look. So on the way up today, guys, on the way up today, you've got a reversal trade. We traded in the live trading room. It went very, very well. Okay. The buy switch trade, we didn't trade in the live trading room because it had too much risk. 
we could wait for this candle to, to fail to push down, guys, and then go long, and the trade's gone really, really well. This MDI continuation, again, lots of risk. Wait for the retrace, wait for the rejection, and then take the trade. This is our mistake trade, guys, and this is the mistake that I want to share with everybody because I said to the trading room, do not go long over the top of this signal. We are 45 minutes into the hour. And then I said, if you were to take this trade, you would enter here and you would put your stop here. Now, guys, one of the traders in the LTR did take that trade and was stopped out, right? So what I'm going to do in running the live trading room is I'm basically now going to say the moment we get to the 45 minute mark, guys, the moment we get to the 45 minute mark right there, this is my tip to every trader globally. The moment you get there, stop taking new trades. Just stop taking new trades. Wait 15 minutes and wait for the market to reset and off we go again. Okay. And now, so what we've ultimately got is on the chart right now is we've got a reversal off a brick wall. Okay. We've got a reversal off a brick wall. Then we've got a buy switch and an MDI continuation. They've all gone to profit. Guys. A trade we're not allowed to take, that's kind of awesome because it stopped us out. Okay, then we've got an MDI continuation that's gone to profit and we've got an MDI continuation we're not allowed to trade, all right? We're not allowed to go and do a pivot, but we've also picked up a reversal and guess what? This is where we were before. Guys, the reversal's gone beautifully, gone back up. So we've turned on the hour, we've turned on the hour and guess what we've just done? Let's have a look. We have turned on the hour. That's interesting. I wonder what we did at the start of the session. We, guess what, turned on the hour. <laughs> so if you're kind of sitting back going, but hang on a second, Lockie, if we turn on the hour, can't I just come in on the hour and trade then and trade then and trade then? Because that's exactly what my wife and I do. That's exactly why we're extending the live trading room, guys. So people can basically just come back on the hour, on the hour, on the hour, on the hour, which is just brilliant. Guys, now, as I'm right on time, I've got a question there. John, how do you know if you have the pivots in the right place? That is such a great question. Right? The only way to know you've got the pivots in the right place is you've got to make sure you're using bank pivots. So you've got to make sure you're using the pivots that are used by banks. Now, we have our own pivot file. Right? We have our own pivot file, so our own pivot indicators, because we generally find that most of the pivot indicators are out there are incorrect. So the only way to make sure you've got the right pivot indicators is to basically do a cross check with ours, make sure yours are the same as ours. If yours are the same as ours, you're in the right place. If they're not the same as ours, you've got a problem. Just straight up, <laughs> straight up. Jeff, it's a great question you raised, mate, because there is the basis for an absolutely incredible trading plan. Guys, that is you come back on the hour, you wait for the market to turn, you take the trade, you manage the trade, you walk away, you come back for the next hour, you do it over and over and over again. As now, if you had have followed that mentality today, as you basically just picked up a bank of winning trades. So my lesson to everybody, please, guys, now I'd, I'd love to find out, guys, it's only an hour long webinar tonight, we've already been an hour. I wanna know what the number one lesson is that you can take away from what we're doing in the charts tonight. So what's the number one lesson? My number one teaching, guys, for, you, for everybody, is the NASDAQ loves the 133 FIP extension. That's my first lesson. My second lesson is the market turns on the hour. You guys all know that already. My third lesson is don't take a trade in the last 15 minutes of any hour. Don't do that because you're better off waiting for the hour turn, waiting for the new signal to be created. Let the market do the heavy lifting and go bang. So tonight, guys, on, in, in the live trading room, we should not have had a losing trade. Now, I'm quite open, guys, to that critique because I'm always looking, I was always looking to be 1% better every time we run the live trading room, as it turns out. Absolutely brilliant. So are there any questions, guys? I don't think there's any questions. Tonight was all about wait for the retrace, wait for the rejection, wait for the dominant candle. If you're allowed to trade it, awesome. If you're not allowed to trade it, get ready to reverse and go back the other way. Uh, Ray, that's brilliant. Don't trade the last 15 minutes. Follow the process and the profits will come. That's fantastic. Hey, analyze the retrace before placing a trade on your signal. That's brilliant. Uh, guys, I think I think everybody's happy. I think we're happy. So I, was, um, I, I hope there's a lot of I hope there's a lot of lessons that come out of that tonight, guys. Um, I just just you look at this now in hindsight, you go, wow, how easy is this? Well, guys and girls, it was as easy as that in the actual live charts. 
provided you've got a very, very simple pl trading plan, provided you can write it on a post-it note, provided you can write your trading plan on a post-it note, you have a very, very high chance, very, very high chance of trading very successfully. And guys, that trade on the hour goes all the way through to the US Open, guys, all the way through to the US Open. So there's this huge bank of potential trades you can take on a daily basis, which is really, really good fun. <laughs> so guys, can I say thank you for the trading pit, guys, for, for having us. Um, it's, it's really exciting to be presenting with the trading pit, such a wonderful company. I, and I do hope, I do hope um, that everyone's learned something. And mate, thank you again for hosting me from an, a, a conference in Cyprus. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time, Lachlan. It was another amazing webinar. <clears throat> Have a great rest of the day, everybody. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.